News. This is America's Radio News. What you want to know. What you need to know. This is South Florida's Health and Wealth Radio, AM 1470, WNN. Here's some great news from Tom Trento, host of the daily WNN Trento Vision Show. Due to the unparalleled success of the Trento Vision Show, you now have an amazing opportunity to advertise on the Trento Vision Show. If you want more information about this excellent opportunity for your business, please contact Tom Trento at 561-319-5533. Or you can email him, tom at trentovision.tv. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to Trento Vision, where bad ideas get pulverized and the truth will set you free. Trento Vision is hosted by Tom Trento. Tom can be reached at 561-319-5533 or tom at trentovision.tv. Listen and watch every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN and TV. Now, let's get a peek at Tom's view of the world. Here's Tom Trenton. I'm looking right at you, Blake. Right in here. <laughs> You're right inside that little box. Right There you are. Now you're standing up. I can see you. Uh, but I also see out of the my peripheral vision, which is about almost 300 and... 59 degrees, like a bird. <clears throat> Actually, I had, um, probably still do, phenomenal peripheral vision. Could see things way back here. Uh, it was, um, I found out later on, okay. racing uh, cars, okay, that one of, the, um, one of the characteristics of a race car driver was... Um, exceptional peripheral vision so blake i see everything you're doing right now <laughs> how many fingers do you have up uh yeah i think that's the same person yeah um so but anyway it is uh thursday uh, december 6 i cannot believe anybody know what tomorrow is my dad's birthday is it and he was a uh, colonel, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Full, full bird colonel. Served in actually uh, World War II, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and uh, got out after 30 years in the military. 30 years to the day. Uh, well, and he's born uh, on December 7th, and I'll never forget his birthday the rest yeah. of my life. How could you forget that? Um, yeah, December 7th, um, you know, our, the, our first 9-11 in the United States of America happened over in Hawaii. And uh, at that point, the, um, the, uh, the uh, what was his name? I'm trying to remember the, uh, the leader of Japan. Hirohito. Hirohito, Hirohito. Um, the Hirohito felt um, empowered by God. It was a theology. I mean, it was total theology. Uh, and um, well, Shintoism has a lot in common with uh, with Islam. With Islam. Many, in many, fact, he made that parallel in the Team B Two book. Many respects, yeah. And uh, you know, they uh, they tried to take us out, hurt us, kill us. They did in many respects. And uh, and a suicide bomber is in essence a kamikaze. I, I wonder today if the uh, the way the United States drew together back then, and loose lips sink ships, and the whole, you know, uh, the women working on the assembly line, building the guns and tanks and all of that. You know, today, I mean, half the population are, are immigrants who don't even care about America. They don't even know what, uh, what the founding documents are about. They have no interest in what is happening in Washington. We're going to start hitting the streets a couple days a week. We're Mm going to do man on the street things. We're going to bring you folks who are listening on TrentoVision.tv or watching there and listening on WNN 1470. We used to do, we do a lot of interviews, video stuff. We'll, We'll go to FAU, Florida Atlantic University. We'll go to the University of Miami, wherever. We'll go on a campus. We'll put a microphone up, talk to people and say, um, you know, 
President Obama has, uh, we, can, we can make up anything totally, <laughs> completely crazy. President Obama has just sold Texas to Mexico. Are you for or against that sale? Oh, oh the, I don't know. If he yeah, did that, yeah, you know, yeah, that's I guess okay. it's okay. Yeah, you, know, yeah. well. you know, there's a lot of Mexicans there, so. <laughs> and this is on college university. College campuses. Uh, oh, I mean, the, 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 and this is where this ideology was, and they intentionally targeted it back in 1963, the Islamic influence, and also the the uber liberal socialist off off the charts left, specifically targeted college campuses to have in 10, 20, 30 years to have the whole ideology of the country shift. And I think that's what you're experiencing. Today. Absolutely, and that's the solution to Israel's problem. Yeah, the solution. I wanted to get into it with the with the rabbi, and by the way, he did a great job. I mean, oh, he's excellent. He's uh, fabulous. Yeah, he's. Uh, We're he's, seeing more and more rabbis like that. By the way, he's an academic. Mm -hmm. He's a historian. He's a communicator, and he, he's got some uh, cojones. I mean, he's, he's he's taking a stand, and and particularly in Boca Raton here. I mean, most of the rabbis here are total leftists. Uh, many of them don't even believe in God. I've debated some of them that don't believe in God. Um, <laughs> that's damn, you're a rabbi who doesn't believe in God. Come on, it, it just it blows your mind. I mean, looking at it from an outside yeah, viewpoint, you're just it's but, bizarre. But um, you're with Tom Trento and Mark, and uh, we're gonna we have a series of topics we're gonna be discussing. It's drive time for everybody in their automobiles. You're heading five o'clock home. Hang with us. Listen if you get out of your automobiles. Please listen on uh, iHeartRadio. You can find us at WNN in South Florida. If uh, you'd like to speak with us, and we're going to get to a caller in a minute here. If you'd like to speak with us or share a thought, you can do that by picking up your little uh, magical box that speaks to you, and you can speak to it, and you push 888-565-1470. Once again, 888-565-1470. We'll take calls this hour and chat a little bit with you um we we want to hit a couple of uh, local and um and uh, international events going on in our area of national security and other interests and uh we got a little video we're going to be uh dissecting here um, rich people suck i think that's the name of the video <laughs> what it's, is it it's um tax the rich tax the rich, tax the rich. <laughs> Same, uh, same thing. Pee on the, pee on the rich. Uh, <laughs> there's a scene at the end of this seven-minute um, animated cartoon of a rich guy peeing on poor people. Ed Asner is the uh, the narrator. Mary, Mary Tyler Moore fan. Yeah, and he was challenged yesterday with, you're, you're narrating a cartoon done by a teacher's union um, to teach kids about the economy, and you have a rich fat rich guy with money bags coming out and peeing on poor people you know what is that and ed asner we'll tell you what ed asner said in in, uh, in a little bit but uh kathleen are you with us hello kathleen how are you today <laughs> good my name's Catherine. but anyway oh, Catherine. Catherine. Sorry, okay Catherine. oh okay it's Catherine. hi how are you it was fine, thank you. And where are you calling I from, Catherine? I know why, uh, you know, but Obama deliberately implementing policies that will cripple America and strengthen our enemies, like the jihadists, why aren't they impeaching him? And why are people letting him get away with this? They just elected I mean, Mitt him. Mitt Romney did a great job on the campaign trail, but why didn't he clearly drive home the point that Obama is either a Muslim or a Muslim sympathizer in the debates? Because he didn't. He said like, one or two things about it. And Obama wants to cripple our military so it's easier for Muslims to take over. He's been against Israel from the start, completely rude to Prime Minister Netanyahu. You know, on Debka.com, the uh, website out of Israel that's International Strategic Military Intelligence, it tells you what's going on in the Middle East. Obama was photographed again showing the soles of his feet up on his desk while he was on the phone to Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. But the problem with mm -hmm. that is, in the Arab world, the worst insult that you can give to another Muslim man mm -hmm. or another Arab is to show them the bottom of, of your feet because it says, I think you're worse than the dirt beneath my feet. We in the West would just think he's a cool president, relaxing, how, how nice. But when we understand what Arab culture is, you know, certainly Netanyahu would know that, too. That's like telling the Arab world, okay, I think Netanyahu would be worse than the dirt beneath my feet, which is terrible. Why doesn't right. he get impeached? Well, where are you from? Where are you from, Kathleen? Oh, Kat, um, I met you before, Tom. I'm in... Um, 
I was in Palm Beach, Florida, but I'm in Canada right now. Oh, okay. My voice is shaky. You probably don't recognize it, but that's okay. Okay. Because I have an illness. That's uh, all. Did we no, meet? No, no, no. Uh, this is Tom. Did we meet, Catherine? Yes, yes, we did meet. You actually came over to my church in Palm Beach. And um, I also met you at a panel discussion. I applaud your work, by the way, because okay. it's amazing. Um, I forget who you had on the panel. I don't remember them by name, but I do by face. Um, well, thank you. Appreciate uh, the support. My name because it's so different. Case. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that. Um, but you're in Ontario now. What, what? How come you're not in Palm Beach? Oh well, um, I'll send you an email about that. Oh, you're living up there. Uh, right, right now I am. Oh, okay. Oh, you're leaving America. I see. <laughs> you're going with the Canucks. Oh my God! You know what? I just came up here to get healthy. Well, I got a, I get, I get a question for you. Well, Mark, why don't you answer her question? Well, I, I she am. asked you a bunch of questions. No, I, it, it, I'm eating over here, okay. so I'm trying. I'm to, asking you a question to, to answer your I'm question to, 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 to see what for, for the solution. So, up in Canada, there, there's been a movement of uh, more awareness of the Islamic of. Uh, influx and you you have a prime minister right now which is you know very hardcore on this issue how did that come to to pass up in canada with being such a you know traditionally a far left uh, arena how did that happen a wacky country is what you mean <laughs> well mark to let you know i lived 33 years in the united states i've only been here for a couple months oh okay i thought you had family or something like that up there that, that might shed the light on that i'm sorry i suppose i could ask my mother yeah but well, answer her questions well, mark. Her, she had a lot of questions yeah, the, the, the questions is why didn't they uh, it, why don't we impeach him why didn't why didn't yeah. romney do this why didn't all this happen well first of all we just good we questions asked, <laughs> they're great questions okay the same questions we were asking and the idea comes out, you know, they wanted free stuff, and uh, they and Romney didn't think the issue that people were concerned about this issue. I mean, it's even like the big e white elephant in the middle of the living room. Nobody's I know, talking about I know, I know. Even even us. during the Pro debate, even during, during the third, even during America. the you guys can yeah. yeah, even during the third debate, where we were all on the edge of our seat waiting for him just to, you know, nail Obama on Benghazi, you know, let alone the Muslim Brotherhood, just Benghazi and all the obvious things that Obama's doing, his pro-Muslim stance here, da da da, da nothing. It was, and that stems to the core of the Republican Party, who's afraid of this issue, they're afraid of the Muslims, and plus, the Muslim Brotherhood is deep inside both parties. I mean, that's the reason... Uh, you you had a Muslim, you know, um, admitted Muslim terrorist as the faith based advisor to both Clinton and Bush, and it's you still ridiculous. and here and also it goes a little bit deeper. Okay, you have the the most powerful man in the Republican Party. Do you know who that is? Most powerful man in the Republican Party. Right. Uh, who would you say that is? Well, the one who has the tax reform, Grover Norquist. Okay. He's he's complete, he is one of the most powerful men in the re, in the Republican Party, and he does not want this issue brought up. And Why? Well, because his of his Muslim Brotherhood connections. He's that goes all the way back to nine uh, well, back to nine eleven. Be fired the whole lot of them. You know, I mean, well, Islam is that's a what we. It's a satanic, genocidal, apocalyptic ideology that's set to destroy America. Yes. Well, yeah, we could have fired them on November 6th, but we didn't. That's the problem. Tom. Well, well, this makes me sick that Mr. Romney didn't mention this on the campaign trail more clearly. Right. And it's it's very frustrating. I mean, and we have, uh, and we hear it from, you know, our side. I mean, we're, we're. I mean, we're actually loathed by, by both sides of the house a lot, a lot of times because we come out and we tag Grover Norquist, and that's the most powerful man in the Republican Party. And, you know, liberals say, oh, you just bash liberals all the time. No, we actually come out very hard on the Republican Party, as consistently. This, you, you know, know this, is, this is systemic. We're in America so that jihadists can take over. These people don't even see it coming. I don't understand it. Uh, you know, it's, that's, well, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Three years ago, four years ago, when we started talking about this regularly, and Tom and uh, the Team B2 and a lot of the other people, we started to raise awareness about this whole issue. The Muslim Brotherhood was was thought of as a cons you know a conspiracy theory group that that you guys are just creating. 
Well, now it's actually come into the mainstream populace of the conversation, and that's due to our work. And so what we have to do, we still have a lot of work to do. We have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing the subject and pushing the material and pushing and push again and push again and push again and push again. And the more, then finally people start to believe you. And you're saying, oh, he said that a year ago, and now it's happening. He said a year before that the Muslim Brotherhood is going to take over Egypt, and they have. They said a year before that, you know, Iran is building a nuclear bomb. Be wary, be, watch out for them. They're going to attack. That's the difference, you know, of, of the persistence of the of the dogged efforts and of building communities, building efforts, exposing, showing it again, exposing again. You know, we show them on the street corner saying, throw Jews into the ovens. We show them on this. And eventually, eventually over time, there's enough public pressure to put onto these politicians to say, no, you don't have, you know, the right not to talk about this. If you don't talk about the subject, you're not going to get voted in. And well, this you know, is the way it becomes. The last, the last guest that you had on the rabbi mm-hmm. was mentioning to him that I was at the Milken Global Conference. Do you know when the mom was there? And I mentioned that they were against America. And he said, oh, no, it's peace loving religion. It's so like. They well, are infiltrated and, everywhere. And, and once a, again, a Muslim who answers to Homeland Security, or Homeland Security chief reports them to a Muslim, a jihadist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and it, once again, like I said, we could talk about the negative part of it. There is a very positive component. Uh, you know, four years ago, uh, you know, I could count on the rabbis on one hand how many agreed with us on this issue, and it was one. And now we're seeing more and more rabbis. Two. It was two. Uh-huh. Schifrin. Well, oh, Schifrin. Well, <laughs> but, uh, no, Schifrin's a great guy. But we could count on one hand. It was two. And also, we can now say that we are seeing more and more of the 80-20 crowd becoming literally by, you know, the 65-35 crowd. And yeah. it's, gradu- it's, it's, you know, this didn't, we didn't get to this place where we're at overnight. It didn't, like, wake up the switch one morning and all like, oh, my God. These people started doing this back in the 1960s and infiltrating the universities and doing this. And they were completely unopposed. Nobody talked about them. They just were com- any total control of the ship. Well, now that we're here, they're, we're getting feedback and pushback, you know. It's going to take time, but the good news is it's a, we have the truth that. on our side. The only thing that can change we have the truth on our they side. Think they're going off to heaven. They're not unless they get with the program. Mm, no, I know. I, I you, and you're preaching to the choir in this one, but the, Thanks, but, but but on this one is is you just have to you keep plugging away because. It's just, it's going to get worse. It's going to get, I guess we keep we saying. I have to say thank you for having our eyes opened. And it's unfortunate that the rest of America doesn't have their eyes it's, open to this. You know, Tom was asking a question earlier about, you know, is, is the same generation, the same crowd that was in 1941 when, you know, the Shintoism attacked the United States, the way Islam is attacking now, is that culture here? And I say absolutely yes, and I know people disagree with me on this, but I say absolutely yes. I saw it after 9-11. I, and it has nothing to do with the media or anything. I saw every, the, the amount of American flags that were just popped up for no reason all over the country when I was driving on 9-12. I know it's there. I know it's there. I know I believe in the American people. I still do, even though there's some that just want handouts right now. But there's, there's something there. I know it. We're we're the greatest country in the world for a reason because we're individuals and we know how to compassionately care throughout yeah, the world. I care for Americans too, but you know what? My friend's a diplomat out of Miami. He writes treaties for the U.S. and Israel, and he said, "I said we're going to go by the sword, aren't we?" He said, "No, not us, but our grandchildren will." That's disgusting. No, I, I I'm, I'm not. I don't believe that, and I just believe in American exceptionalism. I know. America will do everything wrong before it gets it right. And just like Winston Churchill said, you know, Winston Churchill, what you're experiencing right now is what Winston Churchill called the black dog. The black dog, he all, he had it all around him. And it was depression. And it was physical depression. He said, the black dog's coming at me again. And he, you got to look at him from his point of view. I mean, for years in the 1930s, all the way up to World War II, he, he was doing what we were doing. And the liberals were just... 
you know, massively against him. They were loving and hugging Hitler. You know, you had Chamberlain going up there and and, and loving them in the in the uh, in Germany. And you know, we came out of it. Okay, and but you have to keep. That's I think that's the pattern that's been set. And we're, it's going to there's going to be a snapback at one point. The wave's going to come in on our side. And uh, well, maybe people will wake up when the facts of Benghazi come up because they already are coming out. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you can get impeached that way. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't hold my 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 hopes up for impeachment, but uh, there may be, there may this is Tom again, uh, Catherine. There may be grounds there, but um, there's no will there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough with this uh, this administration. Anyway, we're gonna have to move on. We appreciate okay, you calling in. Yes, keep uh, listening and thank you for the support and the help and all that. And uh, keep your emails You're coming. Bye. Uh, you take care and get well soon. Okay. Hey, thanks, Tom. All right, all bye right. bye. Take care, Mark. Catherine. Thank you. Um, very nice lady from, I guess from, yeah, from we've yeah. met here and now uh, up in Ontario on uh, 25 minutes past the hour on TrentoVision.tv on December 6th, one day before Pearl Harbor. Tomorrow we'll do a little Pearl Harbor stuff. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow at the, tomorrow we have on Frank Wuko, W-U-C-O. Frank's an interesting guy. Right. Um, in uh, 23 years in the Navy, Naval Intelligence now he's based out of Tampa. He, um, he he still works with the Department of Defense. And so he's very well informed on all the military issues, intelligence mm-hmm. issues. He does a radio show, but he also does characters. He does Islamic characters. <laughs> I give you. <laughs> yeah. He, he does these imitations and everything. And a uh, good Italian boy. So tomorrow, Frank Wilco, uh, 3 to 6 o'clock on Trento Vision. Right now, uh, 26 minutes after 5 o'clock, we want to tell you that another uh, good weblog, another weblog, (laughs) another weblog that you should be going to. Why doesn't somebody shorten the word weblog to a shorter word like webby? How about a webby? That would have been good. Well, that would have been down in Australia. Here's my webby. Um, they probably do call it down. I'm instead sure of a blog, it could have been a webby. I think that's cuter. It's more. That's the feminine. Probably a guy named a blog. <laughs> blog. I mean, yeah. What a. That's just a harsh word. Blog. But in any event, um, uh, another good blog is WatchdogWire.com. We want you to go there. Dr. Rich Swire is the editor of the Florida version of WatchdogWire.com. He is our good friend, Watchdog Swire. <laughs> Watchdog Swire. So uh, go there. You'll get a lot of information. Uh, daily posts. Again, the the aggregated element of a of a of a blog of a webby of a blog <laughs> is somebody does a lot of work, looks at hundreds of articles, and says this article is relevant for um, for conservative Americans to read right now, or both sides of the issue. So instead of going through all the news things and going here and spending an hour before you know it, up oh, and you watched a couple of stupid videos of dancing elephants and, you know, I go, oh, man, I blew two hours today. It happens very quickly. Mm-hmm. You go to Watch Dog Wire, boom, 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 three articles, 15 minutes, you're done, you're out of there. You're brilliant. You're just wowing all your friends at work with your knowledge of world. And they're events. not just aggregators of in information. They actually. They write. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's right. That's true. And speaking of which, we're going to be on the road tomorrow. Oh, tell them about that, and then I got something interesting for you, Mark. Well, yeah, we're going to down to chase down. We're going on a little jihadi hunt tomorrow, and going to check up on the uh, Kazi brothers, our friends, who decide that they like to build weapons of mass destruction, explosives, from what we found. <laughs> well, it's not like, uh, from what we know, it's not a nuclear device or chemical weapons it's actually explosives so they plan to blow something up so we're going to go figure out what they're going to blow up how are they going to blow it up and see if we can get some more information but we're going to be out there on the streets down there at the courthouse watching them be arraigned and see what other information we can track you know gather for you the same place by the way at Broward and third where they were holding screaming send Jews to the ovens not too long ago and did you check the footage we have their yeah, picture yeah, yeah. I didn't see it I didn't, didn't see, see him in, I didn't okay. see him in there Okay. Um, all right, that's tomorrow. We're going to bring some video back. We'll play it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to play some video tomorrow on that. Right now, I want to read for our listeners and our viewers, our listeners as they're driving their automobiles. Uh, please don't floss your teeth while you're driving. Please. I stopped at a light the other day. I turned to the right. There's a guy. 
floss. Floss it. I'm going, oh, my God, that's disgusting. I reached for my camera. I was going to put him online in a second. And then I go, I didn't want to look at him. He's in the mirror. He's flossing his teeth. Oh, it's like you, so, right, you're, you're, you're shaving, put on your deodorant and everything as you're going to work. You're like, as, you're, as you're driving now, you can listen to us. We don't want you watching and we don't want you flossing. Okay, no flossing <laughs> your teeth. Uh, this is uh, from, this is an anonymous uh, document I'm going to read. But it comes from uh, some folks that uh, check these things out. And the the uh, the writer wants to remain anonymous. Uh -huh. The writer is an airport worker, a guy who works at an airport. Oh God! He Here works he the overnight shift for a company that does private jet charters. Okay, we got an airport not far from here in Boca Raton, <sighs> and you can rent a jet charter and a private deal. So uh, he they get they get somebody calls him up and says I want to rent uh, your jet I want to fly to wherever. Mm -hmm. So um, this guy his responsibility is to check out the passengers against the TSA no fly list. Okay. Okay. So we got a guy who works for a private company, and his job is to when five people want to rent the the jet. Uh, there's a federal regulation that says you got to check your passengers, even though it's not commercial airlines, it's private, against the no-fly list that the Transportation Safety Authority or Administration has. All right. Normally, there's a computer program, he says, that does this, and I simply check the results. But if the program is down on any given night, then I have to manually go through the list, which takes quite a while. Last night was one of those nights. So this is a few days old. So to set the scene, we have a guy who works at a little air charter place at one of these little airports. There's zillions of them all over. Machine went down. He had to check the no-fly list. And here's what he found, some fun facts. He said he viewed the list in uh, Microsoft Excel. We've all seen an Excel document. The Excel spreadsheet, lines. right? Yeah, spreadsheet. Um, so there good. are nine full sheets containing... 65,000 names plus a tenth sheet that goes up to 34,420 names. That's a grand total on the TSA fly list of 623,920 names. So what, say, that, say that again, the number 63,900 and what? When well, you go to the airport and so you go to check 63, in. 63,000 names on the no fly list. When you go to the airport and you check in. Your name is checked against this list, the no-fly list. No-fly okay. means you ain't flying on our airport, on our airplane, because something's wrong with you. Okay? Well, it, it's all right. Let's, now, the uh, 600. Well, let's just say, you know, the, the, the TSA just went through the phone book and just picked out a whole bunch of names to them in there. All right. <laughs> let's say only it has a 10% accuracy rate. Well, let me let me go through this thing, okay. and and then you can you can well, okay. you can throw that in there. There's a grand total of six hundred twenty three thousand nine hundred twenty names. Oh, six hundred twenty three thousand. Six hundred and twenty three thousand oh, nine. Oh, no, six hundred twenty three thousand. Six hundred thousand names over oh. a half a million people. Okay, six hundred thousand people. Um, granted, he says many of these are multiple entries for one person with alternative spellings and birthdays. So okay. you got Tom spelled T-O-M or T-H-O-M, or and it's the same person. Mark with a K, Mark with a C. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would guess, he goes on to write, the list is, is, now he went through the list, and he said, I would guess the list is 99.5% blank names. This is not an exaggeration, but a conservative estimate. 99.5% blank names. Fill in the blank, Mark. Um, Mormon? Yes, Mormon names. Watch them nasty Mormons with their magic underwear. Uh, Swedish they will, names. They Swedish will make names. your... Swedish, yes. Swedish the names. Swedes are really... we got to watch the Swedes. Uh, they're uh, Japanese names. Japanese, those little guys. <laughs> you know, they're still fighting World War II. Okay, we got to uh, watch them. Let me try again. Uh, Indian names. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. The, yes. That's your Indian accent. Yeah, so they're all the same. All my accents are the same. No, it's not Indian names. You mean Indian like uh, woo, 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 oh, yeah, Indian? American Indian names? Oh, yes, they're American. Six hundred thousand American Indian names. They can't okay, fly. Okay, I'm a Canadian. 
Uh, well, no, is there a can- be. Can- 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 nope, uh, not no, Canadian. Not I'll give you two more guesses. Two more guesses. Uh, what the question for those for those listeners? Terror- me- what what religion relates? Oh, we can't say that. We can't say that one. Uh, you can't, but I can. <laughs> I can't say. Ninety nine point five percent on the no fly not- list for the TSA of six hundred twenty three thousand nine hundred twenty names are. Islamic names. Oh no, you're just a hater, Tom. I'm a hater. You're you know? a hater. You're a hater. Because the you, list, you, the TSAs are haters. They're, they're, haters. they're haters. The list is alphabetically alphabetical by surname, but approximately 25 percent of the names begin with AL. Um, <laughs> lucky me, the guy writes. My first two passengers oh. were Albright and Alexander. <laughs> Before that, there are tens of thousands that begin with AB, AH, AK. Among uh, others, after that, there are plenty more ALI, Ali, AS, and AZ. All told, there are 266,503 last names that begin with an A. <laughs> Can you believe that? The, the Arabic names uh, of the 623,266, almost half, about 40%, begin with an A, which is 42.7%. Of the entire list. How many were named Muhammad? It gets better. <laughs> Listen. The, the, um, where'd it go? The T, the I section is quite annoying to get through with so many thousands of instances of Ibn, Ibn Ibrahim, Ishmael, <laughs> Issa with various spellings. The K section is primarily Khan, right. although Muhammad and its different spellings are far more popular as uh, given names than surnames, there are still many thousands of list entries where it is a surname. Yeah. So a surname, um, let's see. Well, just to educate your audience a little bit yeah. here, is there the last name, in, there is no first name in, in Islam. Basically, there is no first name. It's something that it's an American invention when they came over here. It's all, the, the, the name is actually a, a lineage. So when you see even Ben, that means son of, son of, son of, from this area. And so everything is a patriarchal lineage back to its roots. And so everything is by the last name. Muhammad is just a given g- name. Given what it, the surname they, they is the main g- thing. They don't, they don't, they don't, it's not a given name in the Arabic world. So that's the reason there's so many Muhammads in the world and Ahmeds and everything else like that. What do you mean it's not a given name? It's their name. How could it not be a given name? It's not part of the Islamic name culture or structure. It's not everything is from the father. It's it's meaningless, so they don't care about it. So they just say, okay, you know, Muhammad from the Prophet. You know, it's just a way to show their respect to Islam. It has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Like everybody calls me Mark, and that's what I usually go by. And but over there, you're. It's your family heritage, your lineage. Well, how do you it's differentiate? If you got ten kids, how do you differentiate between? Well, you're them? the son of the son of the son of the son of the no, son no. of the mother. The mother and yeah. father of ten kids. Yeah. How do you? What do you call them? If you got ten, how do they <laughs> name them? <laughs> Muhammad one, Muhammad two. Okay. Well, Isn't they got to give them some sort of name. But it's always it's as far as everything about. I think them, you're making that up. I am not making it. All up. right, check that out. Here's my question: You got? I'm not making you got, it up. Osama bin Laden had fifty three kids. How did he know who they were? I mean, <laughs> all right, let's continue. Check that okay, one out. Because right. uh, although Mo- this guy says, although Muhammad and many of its different spellings are far more popular as given names than surnames, surname their last name that they is the family name. Right. Um, the given name was Muhammad. People giving it. There are still many thousands on the list where it is a surname. So there's thousands that the last name is Muhammad. Right. The letters A to M. We're going somewhere with this, folks. We're analyzing the TSA fly list, and we're going to make a critically important point that assists you in your flying pleasure over the holidays. Um, The letters A to M make up the first half of the English alphabet, but on the no-fly list, they make up the first 80%. This guy's like into percentages. After that, we find countless entrees for uh, Nasser, Omar, Rachman, S takes up quite a room with Saeed and Shah and Sultan. The final page is rounded out by countless entries for Umar, Walid, and Yusuf. Many different spellings. By contrast, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. You ready for this? Drum roll. Drum roll. Mike, we need to get a... Um, ooh, that's pretty good. There are a grand total of... 
23 out of 623,000. There's a grand total of 23 entries for Johnson, 37 <laughs> entries for Jones, 11 for Miller, 55 for Smith, and 10 for Williams. That If, if this is true, and the sources seem to be pretty good, this is bizarre. In other words, these extremely common surnames, English surnames, make up zero, uh, 0. 0.02, two hundredths of a percent Two hundredths of a percent of there's thirty uh, there's about a twenty thirty fifty about eighty surnames English they make up two hundredths of a percent so of the entire no fly so list ninety nine point five percent ninety nine point nine eight nine eight percent of all the names on the TSA no fly list are Islamic. Islamic names oh that sounds like profiling it's also worth noting that many uh, many of these have Islamic given names, i.e. Muhammad Smith, Ibrahim Jones, etc. <laughs> oh, that's funny. This would suggest converts would legally change their name, but not their surname. <laughs> Conclusion. Conclusion. The politically correct crowd says that profiling is unfair and everyone is equally likely to be a terrorist. Anyone with half a brain <laughs> should realize this is complete nonsense. Of course, many people realize it. But they make a conscious effort to deny it. Please, the list is updated several times a week, but doesn't change drastically. These are released on uh, November 24, 2012, about uh, almost two weeks ago. And I'm sure all these names are females between the ages of 65 <laughs> and 45, and not males between the ages of 18 and 35. What do you think? 888-565-1470. <laughs> are we being crazy here that of 620... Let's get the number right. 623,920 names, 99.9% are Islamic names. And um, we're told not to profile on flights that uh, terrorists are from the Islamic world. Um, and uh, I told you the other day, I heard Brian Craig on uh, Steve mm -hmm, Kane's show. Mm -hmm. And you got to listen to those guys six to nine every morning. Brian said if he sees a, um, a Muslim uh, come on an airplane, he gets off. He gets off. He says, "I don't care. You know, I'll, I'll go buy another one. I'm not. I'm not flying on an airplane with a Muslim. Nah. <laughs> uh, I have not done that, and it doesn't bother me to fly with Muslims on an on an airplane. Um, though, in all honesty, I look to see if they're Sharia compliant. If they're Sharia compliant, well, how do you do that? Time you got magic eyes. Uh, yeah, I have magic eyes. That's how I do it. You could have the magic eyes too, too, if you want to learn about it. There are, there are uh, 50, 60 metrics, 60, 50 or 60 indicators that indicate if a Muslim is Sharia compliant. If they are Sharia compliant in their outward appearance, oh my word, um, this is called profiling and it's very good to do. Then they fully believe in the Quran, they believe in the Sunnah, the Hadith, they believe in the Sharia, and they hate America, they hate Christians, they hate Jews. That's I like a, to call it threat analysis. Yeah, well, that's, that's a it's threat a little, analysis. The threat analysis. Row 7, C2, threat in <laughs> row 7, C2. Uh, oh, so, craziness. Um, hey, 20,038. What's that mean? That's where we're at today. 20,038. Oh, 20,038 terrorist attacks by people of the Islamic faith, faith. Yeah. since 9-11. Uh, 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 look, there may, be, there may be wonderful human beings out there that, that were born into a Muslim family. That's fine. You, uh, if you're born into a Muslim family, uh, you, are, uh, you have a particular nationality. You might be born in Tunisia or you might be born in, uh, in Spain. Um, wherever you're born, you have a nationality, and then you have a um, a uh, another thing. It's 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 difficult in a sense to categorize the the to label you as, as a Muslim if that's it's not your nationality because that's not the country you were born in. If you're born in Spain, you're Spanish. <laughs> okay, sorry, you're you're a citizen of Spain. You're born in America. You're born in Canada. Now. Uh, in that um, Islam is a religion, you could accept the belief system of Islam, mm -hmm. or if you're in an Islamic family, you're under the purview of the Islamic family. So you're being raised as a Muslim, an individual in Islam is called a Muslim, you're being raised as a Muslim, 
you're a Spaniard because you were born in Spain, and um, and then you have choices in life to continue in that particular religion, and and if if you like it, or to leave that religion and go somewhere else. Do they have choices? No. There's no choice. In it. It's 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 a very Sharia. Sharia is Islam. Islam is Sharia. They're conjoined twins. You cannot have one without the other. Sayyid Qutb explained it best when he said, "You're in the house of Islam, or you're in the house of war." Okay, that's the only two places you can be. And if you're not in Islam, you're at war with everything else. Spain, I, everything. I, well, know. yeah, that's a good point. But I have seen, you know, in my Christian world. Um, all of my friends and, and relatives and neighbors, they want their kids to grow up as Christians and to marry a Christian, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and and the, uh, the logical reason is you have uh, more compatibility with, with, mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, life and mm-hmm. all of that. Jewish world, too. I mean, some of the, some of the st- Jewish stories I've heard, if you, if you convert out of Judaism, like to Christianity, sometimes you're disowned in, in some of those families. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not much different than, than uh, da, 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 da. everything. Don't is, kill you. <laughs> well, every the actual, if you look at the core family unit, it really has to go back to the concept of honor, of how do you obtain honor, and everything in the Islamic faith is obtaining honor through your sacrifice to God. That's the reason the name mean, means so much in the Islamic world. What's because, wrong with that? That sounds pretty good. Yeah, but the honor that they're talking about is you must control the women. You must control the sexuality of your women. You must go back and control their sexual purity. Because so the it, content, <laughs> so the principles may parallel Judaism and Christianity. But the honor God, but the content and how you honor God, right? It, you know, it, love it your is, neighbor, kill your neighbor. Yeah, it, it it, it's, it's it's tribal mentality, and it goes back to the Sharia, the path, the path to the watering hole. You must control the watering hole, and. There, there's, you go back to there was a movie uh, Omar Sharif uh, the uh, where he's at Do- the watering hole Doctor Zhivago no no that was Omar, uh, the oh, oh I forget the name anyway he's standing at the watering hole it's an old movie he's standing at the watering hole and he his bride comes up gives him a drink of water he's at the watering hole and he gives him and then as he rides away he shoots him oh, and nice. he goes well why did you shoot him well he knows where the watering hole is now. I, you know, uh-huh. I welcomed him in my home. I took oh, care boy. of him. I fed him. And I That's had to pretty shoot. good. But that was actually very truthful back in the 1950s. And that culture has not changed. That concept of the path to the watering hole is they must control the, because in a patriarchal society, in a, in a male controlled society, you must control the watering hole. How do you do that? You control your women. Your women are property or trading values to other tribes. Therefore, you have the path to the watering hole, the Sharia, the Sunnah. Is the well traveled path to the to the watering hole? That is its literal translation. So, Muhammad showed you the well traveled path to watering hole. How to control the land, the space, the religion, the tribe. If you let things out of control, you lose Muhammad's well traveled path. Therefore, your tribe dissolves and you're defeated. So, the way to keep the tribe, the watering hole, the name of the family strong is you must control it at every facet, every level. You must tell people how to how to go to the bathroom. You must tell people how to pray. You must tell. It's a, we, we need we need to bring reliance of the traveler mm-hmm. in. It's about a thousand pages and it has everything it's in your life and total. Control what hand? Of what your hand life. to use when you wipe yourself? Uh, yeah. How to walk into the bathroom? You know and, how to. Uh, on and, and we on had this on conversation on. at one point where it's, it's all about points. So if you do this point, if you enter the bathroom in the correct way with your le- mm-hmm. left foot because it's bad, you get a point. If you wipe your butt the right way, you get a point. And it's all about points. And now the way to bypass this, all this crazy point system. To make, have, it, to make it to paradise. You, you can fast forward and go right past Kill it. Kill a Jew. Kill That's a how you Jew. get past Kill it. Kill in the name of Islam. Now your whole family is honored. Now your whole tribe is honored. Now your whole... Existence is well, honor I mean, for yeah. eternity. And, and to, to, to strengthen that point very seriously, the way to make it directly to paradise in an Islamic concept is uh, even if you follow all of the rules of the Sharia, Allah still does what Allah does. He can accept you or not accept you mm-hmm. into paradise. There is no assurance. There is no security, eternal security. That if I followed every single one, you can't possibly. You can't follow... Two of them, let alone every one of them, 
But if you follow everyone, there's still no eternal security or no assurance that you're going to spend forever in paradise. Now, understand, historically, many of these tribes you're talking about came lived in horrendous situations mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, bad food, bad water, bad life. So paradise was infinitely closer to them back then than it is to the Saudis now who ride around in Bentleys, right? right? So... Um, to bypass all of this, Mohammed came up with this scam, and I mean it's just it, it's it's such a scam that it isn't funny. That if you die fighting for me, you go immediately. I and mean, this sounds like used car salesman mm -hmm. stuff, you know. If you die fighting for me, you go immediately to paradise. You don't got to follow all those rules. Doesn't matter. You make it right in. You have to die in a jihad in a holy war. And, and holy wars are against the infidels and the two primary infidels. That's why before I said killing, kill a Jew. That's how you make it to paradise. The two infidels are Christians and Jews, primary infidels. So if you die in a jihad, killing Jews, killing Christians, you're translated immediately to paradise. And if you go to Gaza now, the jihadis that have blown themselves up have schoolyards named after them. So the kids coming through the schoolyards can see the model of how to live to make it to paradise, street boulevards named after suicide bombers, buildings named after suicide because bombers. Because of the most honored people in, in in Islam, because they have sacrificed themselves yep. for the cause. The, the, the cause. For the cause. And, you know, going back to the uh, the whole... It's you know, demonic. It's absolutely but demonic in one, stuff. In, 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 in one way, it actually makes sense. It makes total sense from their point of view, their actually, world view. If you, if, you really have to, if you take your mind and you warp it into your inner desert on a camel yep. going to thing, you have to be the strongest tribe. So the way you make yourself the strongest tribe is you control the breeding of your women. That's the reason you got to, that's the reason you got to cover all your women is because you can't let, you know, tribe B, you know, have sex with a, your, your woman. And that's the reason you got to cover them. And so you have to take total autonomous control, dicta dictatorial control over your tribe to make it the strongest, the one to control the watering hole, the Sharia. And like, like now take now take that that methodology mm -hmm. of how to live in a tribal community of a hundred or a few thousand people. It actually works right. in a desert. Sure. Take that that and and then live that way for fourteen thirteen hundred years, mm -hmm. and then. Overnight, discover oil mm -hmm. and now you get <laughs> on your property, and you go, "Whoa!" You know, we're now interjected. It's God's, to me, if I was one of them, it's God's gift. Oh, it's all His gift. Well, He's given us all this money. Well, but to, but just to in, term, Islam. in terms of the psychology and the sociology of a culture that's been a tribal Bedouin culture for thirteen hundred years, now they could snap their finger and they can fly in a jet plane. They can live anywhere. And now there has to be some sort of translate trans uh, uh, transmission into the 20th century. No, and they're, and they're taking these it's, principles, these Bedouin principles, and trying to integrate them in. They're not trying. To in, no, they're not trying to integrate anything. There's nothing that they do to integrate into no, anything. No, let me finish. They're integrating them into the United States. There's an integration. There's not an assimilation. Okay. They're taking. They're, 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 it's actually called the, um, the, uh, the, the, the hijra. hijra, right? The hijra, a migration out of the Islamic countries into other countries, not to assimilate, but to be the um, to infiltrate, <laughs> to establish the city of the prophet, which within that area, and not change those principles. That's why we have a clash of civilizations right now, the West against and if, Islam. It's and if, real quick, if you look at the uh, Sayyid Qutub, he, he explains it very, he, milestones. Lays he said, it all out. Yep. Lays it all out. It says, you know, this milestone, this milestone, this milestone, uh, Siddiqui, methodology of Dawah. Uh, it's, it's all there. They tell you what they're doing. Uh, they write it for you to learn. Uh, Just read their stuff. This is what we're doing, folks. Read here. their stuff. It'll t they tell you exactly what they're doing, and they do it. Now, a bunch of people are driving in their car right now going, oh, those crazy guys, what do they know? This is what they said about us a couple of years ago when we talked about the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist entity, entity <laughs> that's going to take over Egypt and then attack Israel. Um, we, we said that 
several years ago. We wrote about it in a book, Sharia, the Threat to America, okay? And um, just as we were proven absolutely right, you watch. The stuff we're talking about is written... we didn't go to another planet and meet with aliens and they implanted <laughs> things in our head and we're coming back and explaining it. We sit around and study with very important people, very knowledgeable people. We dig in, we learn, we read, and we come on this show. Who are some of your co-authors, Tom? To tell, please to please tell, tell, tell us. We'll have to do it tomorrow. We're, we're, we're running out of time. Charlie Blank and James Wolsey. Heavy Crazy. duty. Heavy Admiral gun Ace slingers, lines, gun slingers, big, major big, uh, gunslingers, so. big ideological and real life gunslingers. Direct CIA, FBI, da, 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 da. Yeah. Go but um, we got to go right now. But we'll uh, we're here to walk you through. You want to go on the Islamic path, or you want to go on the Trento Vision path? <laughs> Take the Trento Vision path to paradise right here in Boca Raton. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>